Welcome aboard, fellow enthusiasts, as we embark on another incredible video. Welcome to our video on Mohan Singh Obero. We're thrilled to have you here. Roy Bahada Mohan Singh Obero, 15 August 1898, 3 May 2002, was an Indian hotelier, the founder and chairman of Obero Hotels and Resorts, India's second largest hotel company, with 31 hotels in India, Egypt, Indonesia. UAE, Mauritius and Saudi Arabia. In his obituary, the Times of India said that he was acknowledged for putting the Indian hotel industry on the global map by successfully establishing hotel brands like Obero and Trident worldwide. Now, let's shift our focus to early years and embark on an intellectual exploration of its various dimensions. Obero was born in a Katri family in Pound, a minor village of Helam district, now Chakwal district, Punjab, Pakistan. When he was six months old, his father, a contractor in Peshawar, Pakistan, died, leaving his mother with few resources. After attending schools in his village and nearby Rawalpindi, Pakistan, he passed the intermediate college examination in Lahore, Pakistan, but was unable to continue attending classes because of lack of finances. Instead, he learned typing and shorthand. Let's now turn our gaze towards 1918-1934, early works and struggle and explore the fascinating connections it has to offer. In 1922, Obero got a job at the Cecil Hotel in Shimmer. To escape from the epidemic of plague and as front desk clerk, at a salary of was 50 per month. He was a quick learner and took many additional responsibilities. The manager of Cecil, Mr. Ernest Clark, and his wife Gertrude took a great liking to the honesty of a hardworking young Mohan Singh Obero. Mr. Clark and his wife decided to hand over the responsibility of managing Hotel Carlton, now renamed as Clark's, to this impressive young man. It was here, at Clark's Hotel, that Mohan Singh gained first hand experience in all aspects of operating a hotel. During their six months' absence, Mr. Mo on Singh Obero doubled up the occupancy to 80% which gave them enough reason to offer the hotel on a decided amount to Mr. Mo on Singh Obero as they wanted to return to England. Now, let's dig deeper into 1934-1962 business and unveil the hidden treasures it holds within. As India became independent, Obero built additional hotels while expanding his base holdings. In 1948, he established East India Hotels, now known as EIH Limited, whose first acquisition was the Obero Grand Hotel in Calcutta. In April 1955, he was elected president of the Federation of Hotel and Restaurant Associations of India, and in 1960 was named president of honor of the Federation for Life. In 1965, in partnership with international hotel chains, he opened the Obero Intercontinental in Delhi. Moving forward, we'll be taking a closer look at 1962 politics. He participated in legislative politics by winning elections to the Regia Sabha for two terms, from April 1962 to March 1968 and from April 1972 to April 1978. He was elected to the 4th Lok Sabha in April 1968 as candidate of Indian National Congress from Hazarba Parliamentary Constituency and remained a member of that house till December 1972. Brace yourself for a deep dive into Obero Group as we explore its impact and relevance in our evolving narrative. The Obero Group, founded in 1934, employed about 12,000 people worldwide and owned and managed about 30 hotels and 5 luxury cruisers. Obero Amarvelas, Agra, ranks amongst the top 10 hotel spas Asia Pacific, Africa, and the Middle East of the Travel Plus Leisure magazine, and ranked third in best hotels in Asia in 2007. Other activities include airline catering, management of restaurants and airport bars, travel and tour services, car rental, project management and corporate air charters. The group has a number of hotels worldwide, latest hotel additions being in Singapore, Saudi Arabia, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Egypt and Africa. Obero was the first to employ women in the hospitality sector. In 1966, 
He also established the Obero Center for Learning and Development, which is now regarded as one of Asia's top institutions for hospitality education. The spotlight now falls on honors and awards as we delve deeper into its details. Throughout his later life, Obero received numerous honors and awards from the Indian government and private organizations. Obero was presented with the title Rai Bahada Pater family by His Majesty the King of Great Britain in 1943. He was awarded the Padma Bhushan, one of India's highest civilian awards, in 2001. Now, let's shift our perspective and explore Centenarian from a different angle. Almost all publications indicated Oberoi's year of birth as 1898 and his age at death as 103. In his own autobiographical sketch How M. South Obero became India's greatest hotelier, however, he gave 1900 as his official birth year, a fact attesting to his having lived to 101. However, the New York Times obituary, the date is given as 1898 and the following was written. He was 103, although for years he said he was born in 1900 because he did not want to be seen as dating from the 19th century. In this section, we'll be shedding light on personal life and family and its impact on our understanding of the subject. Obero married Ishran Devi in 1920, the daughter of Sri Ashnuk Roy belonged to his village. They had two sons and two daughters. Eldest son Raj Tilak Singh Obero 1924 known as Tiki Obero and second son Prithvi Raj Singh Obero 1929 better known to the world as Biki Obero. Tiki Obero married Leela Naidu on 16 July 1956, he was 33, she 17. Her father was a nuclear physicist, science director for UNESCO for Southeast Asia. They had twin daughters, Priya Obero and Maya Obero. Vicky Obero married Goody in 1959, the daughter of a Punjabi landowner of Lialpa. They had a son Vikram Obero and two daughters. Oberoi's daughter Swaro married Gautam Kanna in 1950. Youngest daughter Prem married Captain K.K. Mera in 1957. Tiki married in 1964 Jutta, the Teuton daughter of Ludwig Mittal Huber. They had a son Arjun Singh Obero. Obero's nephew Braibraj Obero also called as Diamond Obero nickname given by Obero consciously followed his uncle's footsteps and continued in the family business by operating several heritage hotels in the Himalayas. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your support and I'll see you in the next video.